Hi everybody, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada. And you're watching Cars and Coffee. All right guys, I'm in my element again, another Cars and Coffee event, and I couldn't be happy. We're at Mount Bridges Ford for a Cars and Coffee event here. And uh, well, I'm gonna show you guys some things that I seen that stood out in particular at this event. Well, as they say, 69er ain't nothing finer. Here we got ourselves one hell of a resto mod Camaro. Everything about this car screams detail. This is a meal, guys. There's a lot of things on here to unpack. And um, this is exactly why I love going to these kind of shows, because you never know what you're going to expect to see. This in itself is just a piece of art. Look at that. This thing would twist a frame if it wasn't already restored. This is amazing. Willwood brakes are in here. Airflow Research is the headers that are on here. Look at all the chrome. Look at the fuely pipes to this thing. That's insane. Now, it looks like it's a 60, uh, 67 because the side markers have been taken off. Even look at the detail on the door handles, how they've been inlaid into the side. But you can tell it's a 69er from the back rear quarter panel where it's a little bit more boxy. Interior is all redone on this. Look at the paint. How cool is that, guys? Oh, well, let's go in the inside and just take that look. Look at that. That is one heck of a Camaro. Well, we already saw this one at the last Cars and Coffee event at that Porsche dealership, and I was really digging the lights that were on this. But check this out, guys. We got ourselves a 3LZ Z06, a Z06. And um, there's a lot to unpack on this. This I know a lot more of the stuff on. So we're gonna go through showing you all the details on this one because this is a meal just like the last Camaro that we just saw. So first things first, right off the bat, it's black and you've got carbon fiber as the secondary accents on here. This thing has got a very aggressive stance in terms of the camber that's on these aftermarket wheels. I'm not familiar with the center cap and what company this is, but check out the offset that's on these rear wheels. This is a very deep dish. And when I'm talking about an offset, that's about where the hubs mount on the uh, wheel here. And um, I can tell that this was also done recently because it's got the brand new Pilot Sport 4S's on here in a 21. So um, quite a lot of work going on in here. And this is a very aggressive dish uh, or how deep the offset is. The offset again is where um, these spokes are moving into the hub. Now, if you also take a step back and you look at this, it's also got a pretty aggressive camber and a word to disclaim on that, it does make it look cool, but it is gonna make it so that you're wearing out the inside edge of the tire a lot more aggressively. So you wanna be very conscious about how much driving you do aggressively with that type of setup because you are gonna wear out the inside of the tires a lot more aggressively than you would on a normal street setting. So this has got a very aggressive stance on the Corvette, which is cool for driving. Obviously it's gonna help out with performance as well because you know a lot of people are noticing with the C8s in particular that when they do have a, a more aggressive camber setting that it does have a, a better amount of handling. Now, I believe that the gentleman that owns this said that this is an AFE ground effects kit and it's made to replicate the stage three aero kit that comes from the factory on a Z07 package. So all exposed carbon fiber. These canards are also done in exposed carbon fiber. I really love this uh, modification that a lot of people do to the Z06s where they take the side spats and they do them in an exposed carbon fiber. He's also blacked out the marker lights on the side here full length rocker panels and exposed carbon fiber. The steering wheel on this is also uh, modified. Look at the center console and he's got a short shifter from MGW on there as well. This is cool. Now these steering wheels have LED lights for your shifters on here to tell you when you're about to redline. So it is, um, it's working right from the factory. You can hook it up. This is also an aftermarket upgrade. So the scoops, with the intakes are an option that you can do. And one thing just to suggest to the person that owns this, or if you're gonna be planning on doing this, make sure that you put the protective screen back in. Cause as you guys can see in here, see all those little divots? That's from rocks and stuff that are coming in and um, getting into his intake system. And that to me is not, uh, let the motorcycle go by. 
that's a that's a very dangerous thing and an expensive mistake to happen if you don't have um, your protective screens on your side intakes for your cooling system. So down in and about here, there's going to be an accumulation of leaves and a bunch of other stuff that over time will get back in there, and it's very hard to get it out unless you take the whole rear bumper and go through the um, the uh, the diffuser system for all the uh, vents that are on the back. He um, has a cross pipe attack exhaust from Borla on here as well. Uh, this thing's probably going to be a really wild thing to, to fire up. And then he also has the AFE cold air intake system on here, uh, which he mentioned that he didn't do a chip tune with. So it's interesting to see what kind of horsepower output this thing will be putting out. Um, mainly because when you do do cold air intake systems and exhaust and all that kind of stuff, you need to make sure that you're telling the LT4 that it's getting more air. So if you don't do that, it can have some interesting changes to the air fuel mixture that goes into your Corvette and you might not get the performance outputs that you were hoping for. All in all, this is a very consistent build and uh, I'm impressed. There's a lot of cool things that I haven't seen on a Z06 um, and a couple that I really do recommend. The side spats in particular is a really great addition just because it's made out of a, sh a poopy, I was gonna say shitty, well, I've already said it, I guess. This is like the material of what the side spats from the factory look like on the Z06. And it just doesn't really go with anything on the vehicle. You got yourself a $120,000, $130,000 Corvette. And then all of a sudden on the side fenders, they put this plastic there. It just doesn't go anywhere with the vehicle. And I'm glad to see that that is one of the first modifications that a lot of people are doing. You can see also that he's got a PPF wrap on here and uh, it's, it's coming off a bit, but that might just be because he was a little too aggressive with the, uh, the power washer when he was getting ready for the show. I can see myself in the reflection. And with it being a black car, that's a very hard thing to do. So kudos to this gentleman on what an amazing Corvette. Well, I am definitely not surprised that there are a bunch of Mustangs here. I'm gonna tell you guys, I don't know a lot about Mustangs. I do like the Broncos in the back that are over there though. Those things are, are pretty cool. Oh, here we go. This is a limited edition Corvette. This is a Grand Sport. And uh, it was a collector's edition that came out in, I believe, 2018. And I'm pretty sure that this is the Jan Magnussen one. Now in, let's just see, oh, here we go. What is this, the Championship Corvette Racers Design. Now what model year would this be from? I think it's a 2019. Oh, I'm right, this is the Jan Magnussen edition. So the drivers for the Le Mans or the Corvette racing team, um, I think it was Oliver Gavin, Jan Magnussen and Tommy Milner all got their shot. I guess we'll go back here. I bet you it would tell us all right here. There they are, there's all the different editions and there's the one in the center. This one is the Arctic white on crystal red combination. Uh, so these are very rare. There, there was not a lot of these made. I would say that there's probably under a thousand of these Corvettes and then I don't know how many of them chose the Jan Magnussen edition. It's kind of like with the IMSA edition that we just had on the C8, where they only made a thousand and you could choose between either hypersonic metallic or the accelerate yellow. And, and just by the chance of who chose what color, that was the, the composition of the different ones. So there is some coolness to that in that, you know, it's a luck of the draw on how many people chose this limited edition out of the set amount that General Motors was gonna make. Now, it's a Grand Sport, which means it has the wider body, but it has the LT1 underneath the hood. Arctic White, which was the most popular color for the Corvette in that generation, or that, that model year. It has a uh, shark gray, I believe, uh, hash mark on here. The hash marks is one of the most iconic ways to identify a Grand Sport over a Z06. Um, on here, we had a very rare, uh, wheel that was uh, similar to the spoke design that you had on the original Grand Sport wheel, but it was painted with a red uh, stripe around uh, the, the circumference of the wheel hub. Then you have your nice red brakes on there, red on the Grand Sport logo, jet black for the interior. And I believe it also came with a cool plaque that was in there as well. I can see it. I don't want to reach in too far in case he has this locked up and the motion sensors are on because then I'm going to make a scene with this Corvette freaking out. Now, I really do like the back end of this. You get a really good look at all the different colors that are on this Grand Sport. And it's a coupe, so that means the top can come off in the back. You can still enjoy and have some fun in the sun with this Grand Sport. A very cool build. I don't know exactly how many of these were made, but I, I bet you this is in the small hundreds, maybe two to 300 of these made in total. Um, don't see these every day, that's a rare build. Beside the Jan Magnuson Championship Edition, We've got ourselves a Shelby. 
And the reason why I want to talk about this Shelby in particular is because of what's on the wheels here, or what is the wheels on here. These are a carbon fiber wheel, and we're going to know a lot more about that because the new Z06 is going to have a carbon fiber wheel on it as well. So this is our first look in person on the channel of what a carbon fiber wheel is all about. A lot of people, you know, might not know what what it is. Is it is it a bunch of carbon fiber composite that's kind of um, fused together like fiberglass like we have on a lot of the body panel components on a Corvette? Or is it a spun carbon fiber wheel like they've seen on some of the old racing Porsches and stuff like that? It's a little bit of both. So on the inside barrel of this wheel, it's actually made out of a ceramic material. And that has a lot to do with the fact that when you're racing, which is obviously what you're supposed to do with a Z06, that um, when the heat is generated by these big six piston brakes, that it doesn't melt the carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is um, basically emulsified in a resin and then put into a kiln to cure. And the melting point of carbon fiber is not that high. So if you had this entire barrel made out of carbon fiber, over time, the radiating heat from the rotor and the brakes would compromise the integrity of that barrel and you would have a failure. And if you ever had a failure on a front driving steering wheel, that could be catastrophic because that could mean that the vehicle can go anywhere um, that the physics take it. And that's obviously not a good thing. So um, the face of this is made all out of carbon fiber. I'm gonna go back into the sunny side here so that you can see it but you'll see that the barrel is not. There is two versions for the Z06. You can get a painted version and this exposed version. I don't know why you would put all that money into getting a set of carbon fiber wheels and then paint them up. So that would not be the option that I would suggest even though I haven't seen them. But based on what I've seen online and my experience in general with carbon fiber wheels, this is a very expensive option that, I hate to say it, you're gonna pay more for less unless this is trying to become a, a garage queen because you can only imagine how expensive it would be to get a little bit of curb rash on this this tire with them being run flats there's not a lot of an aggressive sidewall like you would see on a truck tire or something like that like if you go look at these broncos that i'm kind of fancied with they're going to have a very forgiving drive-through tire and when i say a drive-through tire those are where you usually get your curb rash from and when you're rubbing up against a curb with a truck tire see how much more it protrudes out that's that's your guardian angel you don't have any guardian angel and if you've got a set of carbon fiber wheels i don't even know if you can repair that. that that'd be a question for the channel that i can answer at a later date but um you're you definitely have to be cautious when you're driving around with one of these because it, I, I again i don't even know how you could repair it so we'll learn more about that when we see them on the z06 whenever i see the rapid blue on the new c8 I originally think of this blue, and I don't know the name of the color. I'm sure here uh, there'll be someone that'll know what it is, but here it is in person, guys, and I'm gonna quickly go over because I see that there is a rapid blue C8, and apparently it's brand spanking new. It just it just got delivered a couple days ago. Now, right off the bat, just from comparing them, that, that blue on the uh, RS Focus was metallic, whereas this is a pastel. So there are some differences, but driving by, I always saw this as an iconic blue from the, the Focus RS lineup. But here we got ourselves a rapid blue. Oh, wow. And it's got the tension blue 3LT interior. This is a 23, not a 22. There you guys go. There's your first look at the center plaque that's on the 70th anniversary edition. And then there will also be right there a new decal that's on the rear window of the hardtop convertibles. This thing's right off the line and it's got the new forged wheels. What the heck? I did not know that this was gonna be here. Well, that's why you go to a Cars and Coffee event, guys. You get to see things that you didn't even know about. And it was two doors down from mine. All right, a lot to unpack on this one. We got ourselves a 3LT hardtop convertible with a brand new forged wheels. This is right out of the factory. I'm looking at it and it seems to be pretty base. And with the fact that my 23s just came in, uh, a week ago this can't be that much newer i guess you know the either easiest way would be to look at the vin number oh this is 250 so this is probably two weeks old this corvette because it's 250th off the line rapid blue black as the accents he's got the dual indy racing stripe on it he has the original z51 splitter from the factory just talked about what i think about this pitted plastic material but can't make a lot of knocks on this one this is a really cool build 
He does have red calipers. And if you look at the vehicle, there's nowhere else on this vehicle, except for maybe on the seat belts, where you see red and, and the logos, yes, and the logos. Not my suggestion, but you know what? I can't knock on this too much. Oh, and the icing on the cake, he has the new black exhaust tips that just came out for this year. This is a sensitive topic for me because I'm, I'm a little jealous that we couldn't retrofit this on the earlier models. Um, to me, this is just a, an amazing cost-effective option. It's $230 Canadian to get done on your vehicle. And it just completes the look. Now I did my exhaust through uh, an aftermarket company. So that's how I got my exhaust to be black. But you know, for the people that are in the 20 years, the 21 and the 22s, there's no way that you can do it without taking the exhaust off. Now on the topic of exhausts, I guess you'll see the Cars and Crosby project in the future, but I actually have my exhaust from Corsa that I just picked up from alloy wheel specialists that are going on my next project. So there's your first look guys at the next exhaust that's going on my next project that's tucked away in the back or in the front of my Corvette. Um, so you'll see that in a later video as soon as that Corsa exhaust goes on the new Cars and Crosby project. All right guys, this I've known about for a little while and I haven't been able to film it because the client did not want it filmed when it went through the dealership. But we actually brought this in for a client and uh, well, it's out in public now. so anyone could film it I'm glad that he's finally getting a little bit more confident to show off his girl this is here at one point the fastest car in the world this has more displacement than about three pickup trucks there's about 16.4 liters of displacement we'll show you the engine in the back it's all wrapped up this Veyron uh, the original color is uh, I believe black that's on this one it's a 2006 model but one thing in particular that I want to show off to you guys this is a set of Voss and wheels on here and this is a completely forged set. So a little bit different than the hybrid forged set that's on my C8. And you can see it in the intricacy of these spokes. So it's even more intricate. It's even more um, you know, precise in terms of how small the spoke design can get on these. And look at the size of that ceramic rotor on there. That is wild. So this is a 20 inch in the front and it's a 285 in the front as well. That's the width of the tire. The width on mine in the front is a 245. So that's wild that it's even that w much wider. And um, I'll just look at the interior on this, guys. How cool is that? And it doesn't look that dated. Like this car is, uh, well, 2006. <laughs> I'm not good at math in front of you guys here, but you guys do the math for me. Isn't that wild? And then in the back here, we've got 20. So it's sitting on the same kind of setup that I have, which is a 20 in the front and then a 21 in the back. But look at this, just like with most exotics, you have the engine exposed. This is two V8 engines that are slapped together. This is a W16, 16.4 liter engine, around a thousand horsepower out of this thing. I think my favorite stat about this is uh, at full throttle, you only have about 12 minutes of full throttle before you go through an entire tank, which is just insane. I believe that that was it. I'm sure that I'll find the clip and I'll link it in is a clip that James May did from when he was in Top Gear. Hopefully it's not been trademarked if I try to link it in. But this is just an insane car. And again, to think that this is a 2006 and it still looks like it's ready to go to the moon in terms of futuristic styling. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, guys, Porsche guys are gonna like this. This is an RWB, which is a very rare uh, modified Porsche. These are, um, I believe, in the mid 80s i had an 86 this doesn't look like my 86. i wouldn't be surprised that this is actually a 930 slant nose that's been modified you can see that it's had uh the top of it chopped off as it says here with chop top or chop shop but rue welt actually the name of it's usually in the front here for rwb rue welt b griff you can see it there and there all custom like a singer interior just absolutely gorgeous for caro seats this is one of the coolest cars here at the show and they're extremely rare and i'm digging the color as well as you guys know i like gray and that is a really cool gray well i would say that this has been a success we've got old school beamers over here nice turbo from a previous generation i'm not even going to try to list there's another grand national over here we've got a lingenfelter camaro this has been a great day 
I have to get back to work because this is a Saturday and I don't normally even get out on Saturdays, but I'm very fortunate that uh, well, with it being a Cars and Crosby coffee event, I can do some networking here. And uh, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Thank you very much.